hello guys so welcome back to my channel um trust you are doing okay and um als is not suffocating us i know it can it can be very overwhelming but um try to relieve yourself all right like i said in one of my videos um try the best you can to cash up some rest whenever you have that time to please do als is demanding and so you need your mental health to be intact when you have the time to sleep please do catch some sleep it will help you all right um we are going to continue with um, pointers arrays and strings uh, and if you've not watched the tutorial video of pointer array and um arrays and strings please do so it will give you a firm foundation to what pointers arrays and strings are and like i said before um, this is going to help you when you have to do your printf project and the simple share project so you need to understand these concepts please so try the best you can to go back and watch the tutorial video um, pointers arrays and string on this channel all right thank you guys for your comments thank you for the feedback it really means a lot to us um please do like do share and do comment all right give us that feedback it will help us to do more i have very limited time today so what i've done is to put all the answers to the questions in a google document and the link is right in the description of this video so you can just go to the description of this video click the link for the google document and you will see all the answers there all you need to do is to you know write the finding and copy the code and paste all write the finding go through the code and type the code yourself which is what i advise but if you don't have the time you can just copy and paste but i would prefer you write the code yourself so that you get used to writing the code yourself but if you can stick around please do stick around i'm going to explain um a few of the tax with us maybe from tax one to taxes or thereabouts and then write the code with us debug with us see the errors see how we are able to debug and get it correct which is part of what ALS want us to know um, so the Google document contains the main.h contains the put car and um, and all that so before you start you need to um, make sure you have your readme.md file in the root of your repository so I already have my readme.md file make sure you have your putcar.c make sure you have your main.h where you have all the prototypes so i've already included um this the prototypes of all the functions i'm going to be working with i've included all the prototypes here um so please do make sure you have that um included then also make sure so these are my main.c files I'm going to be using for testing. Um, like I said, because of copyright issues from ALS, I don't want to display the intranet. So I already have the main.c files copied down here. And then when it's time to compile, I will just have to pause the video, pick the compilation line, and then um, compile, and we continue from there. Right. So um before we continue let me just do something i just noticed something here let me include the string.h file here the header file for string.h so that because we're going to be using the string function so let me just include it here on the header file all right so that we it doesn't give us issues 
when we want to compile okay so let's continue or let's start let's start so make sure you have your putka file make sure you have your main.h file i already have that in the google doc so you can just copy all the prototypes there and make sure you have your readme.md file before you start so let's look at our first question our first question says that so it's just a continuation of the pointers arrays and strings nothing new um so here is just to test our knowledge of um, different functions in um, array strings and pointers our first question says that we should write a function that concatenates two strings write a function that concatenates two strings and they've given us a prototype for this and um, this function appends the source string to the dead string overwriting the terminating null byte at the end of dex and then adds a terminating byte and then adds a terminating null byte returns a pointer to the resulting string dex okay so this is what ALS is saying they want us to concatenate strings two strings and what is concatenation concatenation simply is just to add one item to another to make it one all right so let's say um, let's say this is Sunday all right so these are two names so we um, let me write this this way okay so let's say this is Dex all right so this is Dex and this is SRC which is source so dex is equal to so now we want to concatenate dex is equal to sunday and here we have the terminating null byte and source is equal to Okay, let me just delete here. Okay, and let's include the terminating in all bytes. Right, so we have these two files. Dex and SRC. Now SRC is Wheezy, Dex is Sunday. Now they say we should concatenate these two files and that we should append the source string to the Dex string. That means at the end of Dex, write Wheezy. Right? So we should append this to this. So after Dex, we should write Wheezy. So that means after Sunday, you should write wheezy on the same line appending it to it and they said the next thing they said we should do is that um overwriting the terminating null byte which is this so meaning instead of so if we are to append this sorry don't mind my this thing so this is this mm -hmm. okay and um here we have Sunday, right? Just pay attention, you understand? Don't mind the writing. Now, after Sunday, remember we have the terminating null byte. But it's saying that we should override the terminating null byte. Meaning that at the end of Y, instead of having the terminating number null byte, the next we should have is W. And the next thing is I. 
the next thing is x the next thing is y that's what it says is overwriting override over overwritten the terminating null byte and then it say at the end of this and add the terminating null byte and when this is done then add the terminating null byte to make it a string so and then we should return dex so this is basically what we are asked to do right sunday and wheezy are two different files now concatenate these files and append one which is socks to dex but before you do that make sure you remove the terminating null byte at the end of sunday and then add wheezy to it and we are done adding wheezy to it then put a terminating null byte that is exactly what they want us to do and of course you know that all these have index so in this one two three four all the way to the terminating null byte all right so how do we go about this how do we go about this let's go and write our file and write our code sorry so the name of our file is zero S-T-R-O-C card dot C Okay So let's add our header file Alright So here We'll include our Betty documentation, but before then, let's get our prototype. So let's get the prototype of our, our task. Okay, so we'll paste our prototype and um, the function. So we'll remove the semicolon because it's a function. And let's go ahead and do our Betty documentation. So the name of our function is track card. So we'll just say function name to concatenate. Um, I'm not going to do all that. Then um, the next thing is um, a parameter, which is um, test parameter one. Please make sure you write your comment the way it suits you. Um, and then the next one is SROC parameter 2. And um, there's a return statement for this. So return, return dest. Yeah. Okay. So let's end our comment. Good. So what do we do now? Let's make sure we include uh, opening and closing bracket so that we don't have issues. So let's declare some variables to use. So now we need to know the length of the string. So let's declare in dex length and let's also declare source length. I will see length and let's also declare um, what we will use for our looping int i okay so desk length to help us get the length of our destination file um, source length to help us get the length of our um, of our source file as SRC and then I for our looping why not just initialize this already so can we just initialize this to zero and also initialize this to to zero something like this okay beautiful so first what we need to do is to get the length of our files right so we are going to use i 
to do that so we say i is equals to zero right of course this is something you are used to already and then so we're now looking for the, the length of dex and we'll say dex provided is not equals to the terminating null byte right provided is not equals to the terminating null byte then it should print you should just count so yep it should just count provided it's not equal to the terminating null byte okay so the next thing we have to do is to check for the length of socks now we know the length of decks so the next thing we need to do is to check for the length of source so let's go ahead and do that so sruc is what we are checking for right now so for i is equal to zero right and then xruc is not equal to the terminating null byte terminating null byte we will just increment that so just continue counting provided you don't hit the terminating null byte so just continue counting right continue counting but if you by any chance hit the terminating null byte then sorry this is supposed to be because it's the length so it's source length and dex length yes because it's you know that's what we declared source length and death length so provided you don't you don't hit that continue counting but if you hit that then stop counting that is the end of the string so what do we do now here we'll say we'll run another loop here now this loop is to help us to append to append source to to dex so for i is equal to zero yeah and let me give this space for i is equal to zero right and i is less than or equal to sruc len s r u c len okay s r u c len for i is equals to zero and i is equals to equals to x r u c len okay then we're going to increment i so why do we have to say equals to to append of course we are using loop so we we'll loop through SRC, right? We'll loop through SRC. And then we we'll say, now, if we say i equals to 0 and i is less than or equals to SRC, so if we say i is less than SRC len, that means it's going to pick i equals to SRC len without a null byte, right? But we we'll say i is equals to or less than SRC len is picking even including the null byte all right i don't know if that is clear so the next thing we need to do is is to increment so i plus plus I plus plus okay now I don't want I don't want this to give us errors so okay fine so the next thing we'll do is is not to append. So this this 
this line plus i. I'm going to explain this. This length plus i is equal to SRC okay now what does this mean that this this now plus i is equals to this so each time this loop each time this loop runs is going to check the length of this and it will add one character from SRC to it all right each time it runs it's going to add one character to it so XRC we end we add one character so this length plus one character of SRC I to append to this right now by the time we finish appending at the end SRC is going to include a null byte which is this equal to at the end of the string is going to include a null byte I don't know if that is clear now he's speaking this is speaking this length which is the length of whatever um uh whatever is the length of the dex is going to pick that right when it picks the length it is then going to now we already set this that the length now is without determinating null byte the length for source is without determinating null byte so it's only going to pick the length without determinating null byte and after picking the length what then happen when this loop runs one character from the um, source file is going to be appended to this length. Another character will come and append, and at the end, it will append the null byte because we say less than or equals to SRC length. So it's going to append the null byte, which is equals to that's the total length of the null byte. All right, I hope that is clear. If that is, then we we'll just go and return. So here we are just going to return dex because they say we should return dex. So return and we'll just say this here. Okay. We can then save and exit. So let's run Betty on this file. Zero. Oh Betty is fine. Betty is fine. So let me go ahead and copy the compilation line. Okay, so let's compile and see. If there are no errors, then we are good to go. Okay, so we have little errors here. Um, this length, okay. So that's line 22. There's error in that. So let's go and check that. So it's text, not text. Okay. I think that is I think that is okay now. So let's go ahead and let's run Betty again just to be sure. Betty is fine. And let's run our code. I mean compile our code our code is okay then let's run our file and see um, zero yep so let's see okay so look at your main dot um, just after your main dot ish um, you should have something similar to that in your result so hello we have word we have hello world, we have world, and we have hello world. So hello world, these are the two files, and then we now appended this to this hello world. So appended source to this hello world. All right. So um, simply that is how you can concatenate two files. First, you need to make sure you know the length of the files you want to concatenate, and once you know the length of the file, then you can then um, append one file to the other so you can either append source to dex or append dex to file um, to dex to source 
all right so you can append one file to the other any way you turn it is the same is the same um, law the same way and then make sure that you you know you give a condition not to include the terminating null byte before they are before appending so you separate the terminating null byte and when you are done appending you can then add the terminating null byte at the end of appending all right the string so that you have just one terminating null byte at the end of your string so that is it for question number one or question zero i hope that is clear and let's go ahead and look at the next question the next question question one says write a function that concatenates two strings two strings all right concatenate two strings and we are giving these strings and then they say the string card function is similar to the um, SROC S str card function except that it will use at most n bytes from sruc and sruc does not need to be null terminated if it contains n or more bytes all right let's read this question again to understand what they want us to do now they says that we should concatenate all right we should write a function that concatenate two strings they say that the s the strn cat function is similar to the str cat function except that for this um strn cat function it will use at most n byte from source meaning it's only searching for n bytes if it's not n bytes it's not searching it's not picking it so if you have let's say for instance you have um you have Sunday and here S is N, um, U is not N, um, D is N and Y is N. When you're concatenating this using this function, it's only interested in picking the functions that are the N byte functions, which is S, N and D. These are the only functions or the only um, characters is going to append to the destination you want it to append to. All right simply that is what it means that is if you have to append if you have to append so let's say sunday wheezy right so if you have to append wheezy to sunday and in wheezy you have only two characters that are of the end byte so let's say w and x what the function is saying is that you can only append w and x and then include that terminating null byte all right you are not appending everything i hope that is clear okay so you pick only only the ones that are of the m byte all right only the ones that are of the m byte that is what you pick so let's see how we can do this first the name of the file vi one st dot c let's include the header file so make sure you have all the prototypes in your header file so that it's going to be easy for you then let's copy the prototype of our function okay so remove the semicolon because this is a function and then let's go ahead and document better i'm sure that we are used to better right now so i might just have to skip that from the next question so all you need to do is to pick the function name all right and just tell betty that this is what this function is doing so you can say this append something so i'll just say the function name um function name and then the next thing we look out for is the function parameters so you pick your parameters so i'll just say function parameter and then we'll pick our second parameter 
and I will say at S R C say parameter two and then the next one is at n we have three parameters here so at n i'll say parameter three you can do better all right with the description and the next one is um, return so um it's going to return this obviously okay so i think that's it about um better documentation so let's see how we can write our code now all right so what do we do now we need to append or we need to con concatenate but we're only interested in the end files right we're only interested in the end files so let's use since we are not limited to using the put car function um, let's use the standard um, output um, function that's from the string so we just use that to calculate our length instead of looping through the length you can still loop through the length if you want of course you already know how to do that but this is standard if you want so you can just use this all right and um, let's declare something we will use for looping so it mustn't be i you can be j it can be a it can be anything of your choice so let's go ahead and see how we can concatenate this all right really fast So how do we go about this first we need to we need to look for a way to loop through this so i equals to zero all right and then i is less than n which is the characters we are looking for and so let's the reference source of course here the pointer source sruc and sruc is not equal to the null byte right it's not equal to the null byte and then we we'll just increment i okay i hope we get that then what do we do What do we do? Let's so dex so this is pretty straightforward. I just want us to I wanted to just cut um the stages like we we did with the other one so i didn't i didn't I, I didn't have to calculate the length so i just used the the standard function length so the pointer to sruc of course that is just the pointer we don't know we don't know what is holding so we are only using the pointer all right we're only using the pointer and that is why we don't even check for the length here because even if we check for the length it's it's of no use to us all we are looking for is the m bytes all right and it's a pointer it's a pointer to source so we're only picking the n bytes of this pointer to source which is not even the variable itself right so we say sruc plus plus so just look through it and give us and give us the n characters right 
so this length plus i so whatever is this just add add each end byte from the source to it like what we did in our last code all right and after there let's say this length plus i i try to be very careful why i write this code because i know you guys are also writing to follow so i don't try to rush this so this length append the terminating null byte so when you are done appending the m byte of the pointer of sruc you can go ahead You can go ahead and ap ap append the null byte at the end after appending this the m bytes so simply um that is all we have to do and then we'll just return let's say we should return what dest we'll just return dest okay I think that is all we need to do so here we use a standard output to calculate the length and then we initialize it and we say provided it's less than n and the pointer is not equals to um, the null the null byte then give us all the n bytes inside the pointer to source all right and then all we what are we doing here we just increment the increment the length of this by one at each looping we added one one m byte from source to this at each loop one n byte from source and when we are done we then include the terminating null byte at the end of source so now source is equals to pointer to source and it's also equals to the null byte at the end so let's go ahead save and exit uh, what did i just do okay then let's run betty i hope betty is fine so trailing white space space required before the open parenthesis 15 okay so here and trailing white space I don't know where that is okay yeah so I think that is okay let's check and see if Betty is fine with us no discussion found for parameter source okay let's see um, let's remove the pointer here okay I think that is fine now Betty don't want to see that pointer all right that is fine so let's then compile our code okay so let's compile our code and see mm, what's it now so it's saying um line 26 undeclared first okay so instead of source um there's a mistake then like line 26 so let's fix that let's face line 26 so like i see is that line 26 here yeah? was i correct is it line 26 or line s r c okay i've seen it s r c not s c r s r c yep so this is the debugging i was talking about so we do this together so that we learn together like you can see what it is like you know and then you s know okay if i have this error message this is what i need to do okay so check your code you should have something as similar um similar to this all right you should have something like this from your main.c where you have after your main.c the result there after the compilation line you should have something like this so if you have something like this, congratulations. 
go ahead git add git commit and push to your github repository always remember that als checker doesn't check your terminal what it checks is your github repository so once you are finished doing your work you need to push your work to your github that is the only way you are passed and once you are done go and check use your checker and if your checker is not working at the time provided you have your result correctly the way it is supposed to be then just mark done manually mark done if you don't do it even if you push your code to git up you don't do it you don't use the checker you don't manually click done your project is as good as not being done i hope that is clear great let's move to the next question we are spending a lot of time but it's okay because we need to explain this the next question says that you should write a function that copies a string write a function that copies a string all right your function should work exactly like the strun copy function so we can use the standard copy function for it it should work exactly as that exactly as the strun copy function so let's write a file name and see how we can do this so a file name is um two strncpy dot c and let's include our header file main dot h all right let me copy the prototype before we continue okay so let's paste a function name and let's go ahead and and document betty i had said i wouldn't do this but just so we don't have um too much challenges let's do it together so the name of the file is um on the score strncpy that's the name of the file and we're just saying function name all right so let's consider the parameters so we have dex parameter one um, we have um, sruc xruc parameter 2 and we have um, we have n parameter 3 so we are going to return the function so what's our return let's just return it's actually supposed to return the the um n number to the n byte but i can just say this you can do that correctly all right so we are writing a function we are writing a function that copies a string your function should work exactly like the strn cpy now so if you check if you check the manual that's a man function for strn cpy you should understand what this function does this function simply copies only the n characters from sruc to dex only the n characters just like when we're concatenating we, can, we concatenated only the n characters here we're going to copy only the n characters so it's the same thing but the difference now is that this one we are copying we are copying the other one we were appending concatenating that is it so it's almost the same thing but here we're only looking at the end characters and another thing is that here we have pointer to dex and pointer to source um the other task we did we only have the variable name dex and variable name source okay so let's see how we can simply write this code and um walk around it first I will just initialize 
um, my variable that I will use for looping so let's go ahead and loop for i is equal to zero okay and i is less than so because now we're looking at the n by it so it's less than n please follow just follow me and x r c almost similar to what we did before so nothing much to explain here so if you get lost then you can just refer back to the extensive explanation in tax tool and then i plus plus right i say tax two tax one okay so now what do we do let's use the y statement so why i why i is less than n why i is less than n what should happen this should happen dex is equal to equals to determinating null byte all right dex is equal to determinating null byte then i plus plus okay so now i'm going to return okay so i think i can just return dex because of course we are appending to this or we are copying to dex so i can return dex which dex is actually picking the null bytes i mean the the n characters so let me try to explain um our code so now we are looping through um our file and then of course is the dex we say i is equal to zero i is less than n and sruc is not equal to the null byte which is where we are copying from provided is not equal to the null byte then keep copying keep looking for the n files uh, the n characters and copy and now we use a while statement and say while provided that i which is holding um, the destination now at this point is less than n provided is less than n that is provided that the n characters are still left in src or the sorry provided that is less than n that is the n characters in src have been copied and the null byte is not there des plus i should be equals to the null byte so it should then include the null byte once it's done copying it should include the null byte so you can actually say i equals to i is less than or equals to n and it will end there all right but just for um clarity all right and then return dex so let's go ahead and and check betty and if that is not clear just go back to um, the last task where we concatenated um using only the m byte you should understand that some more so let me copy the compilation line okay so let's compile and see okay we have we have errors this statement but okay um, so let's let's face this 
So. And um yep. so that should work okay so let's go ahead and I think I was a bit fast there so all I did was to just guard the um, the loop so the loop all these statements it's supposed to be inside all right all the statement here inside the loop so open and close the loop here so everything here the while everything is inside the loop that is what it was complaining about so let's we need to compile again and um, let's go and check our file okay so check your file um, you should have something of this nature that is if you have something like this then you are good to go question 2 yep so if you have something like this then you are good to go all right so let's go ahead and move to our next question so like i say the code is in whatever you think it's not clear check the description of this video you should have the code there so question three write a function that compares two strings okay so we're going to write a function that will compare two strings so all these are actually standard output um, standard library functions that we can go through c m p dot c hope that is correct s s c r o c m p dot c yep so let's include our header file so ash include main dot h now let me copy the prototype for this or the function prototype for this okay so let's go ahead and paste our, our function name and then let's document betty so our file name is strocmp so we say function name um next we look at the parameters we have x1 parameter one next we have s2 parameter two and um, we have our return statement. I'll just say a string. Okay. So let's go on and write our code. So the question says that we should write um we should write a function that compares two strings your function should work exactly like the struc mp so you can check the standard um struc mp function to know what it does but simply what it does is it compares two strings so if it compares a string and um, if it compares a string so let's say this is x1 
and S2, right? Now, if you compare this two string and these two string are equal, it returns a positive number and says they are equal. If you compare this two string and string one is greater than string two, it returns a positive number one and says that string one is greater than string two. And if you compare these two string and string two is greater than string one or string one is less than string two, it returns a negative number and says that string one is greater than string sorry is greater than string two is greater than string one all right now how does this check since strings are are just characters it uses the ascii value so for instance let's say if it considers a and b small a and b and small b small a the ascii value is 97 small b okay let's use something else small a and let's use small 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 a and small b is okay 97 98 okay let's use that 97 98 so this is equals to 97 and this is equals to 98 so 97 minus 98 minus 1. So this is negative. If you turn it, B and A, this is now 98 and this is now 97. So this is going to be positive 1. So it's greater than this. And if it's A and A, of course it's 97 97 so it's equals to zero so that is what this function does it only compares two string and if the function returns negative that means the x1 is less than x2 if it's positive x2 is less than x1 or if it's equal to then it will return zero because both of them are equal right so let's see how we can write this function so let's declare a variable we use for a loop let's declare our favorite variable int i and let's go ahead and and loop so we're going to loop through So for i is equal to zero, i is equal to zero, and then x one is not equal to determinating null by. is not equal to the terminating null byte let me just add this together rather than writing two for loops all so we can use the so you know that is all right s2 not equal to determinating null bytes i plus plus okay so if x1 and x2 is not equal to the terminating null byte. Let's give it a condition. If x1 
x1 is not equal to s2 if x1 is not equal to s2 do this uh, here this okay yeah so if x1 is not equal to s2 that means x x2 is greater than x1 or s1 is greater than s2 if it's not equal to s2 if it's not equal to s2 let's give it a condition so if s1 is let's start with the less than if it's less than s2 of course from my explanation you should understand what we are trying to do we are looking at the three conditions if it's less than s if it's less than s2 then let me guard this before betty will complain so if x1 is less than s2 what should it do it should return to us so more like saying print it should return to us x1 is what less than s2 that's x1 minus x2 so x1 minus s2 of course x1 minus s2 x1 minus s2 is smaller now so if is less than this it should return to us x1 minus x2 and give us the result of course this is going to be a negative number all right but if not I want to be sure that okay so as if let me shift this okay so as if now we're going to consider s2 less than x1 as if s2 is less than x1 let me try to do something i hope it works if it doesn't work so let's let me try to do this as if s2 is less than sorry we have to include that i there is less than x1 So as if S2 is less than X1, then it should return to us, more or less print, and say S2 minus X1. S2 minus x1 okay so if if x1 is not equals to x2 
all right so that is the first condition if x1 is not equals to x2 remember we are trying to compare these three conditions if x2 is not equals to x1 is not equals to x2 that means it's either x1 is greater than x2 or x1 is less than x2 but if x1 is greater than x2 that means these two are equal so if it's not then let's consider these two conditions first if x1 is less than x2 you should what check x1 minus x2 and give us a result as if x2 is less than x1 you should check for the result and give us that x2 is less than x1 so we've considered x2 being greater than x1 or x2 being less than x1 or and then x1 being less than x2 and x1 equals to x2 so we've considered the three conditions so the next thing we need to do now is to return okay so let's see and hope our code runs properly so betty three um parentheses are required on the return statement line 18 um, no description for parameter no description found for parameter or member s2 and then x description okay let me just go through this one after the other and see okay so no x2 and um what's the other complaint line 18 line 18 no no guard for this um let me see the other complaints i think i fixed like two already okay so that's fine and let's copy the compilation code so let's um go ahead and and paste our code let's um run our code and see so we have um okay i think there's an error here 15 minus 15 and 0 no we're supposed to have 15 minus 15 and 0 or minus 15 15 and 0 as the case may be so let's see so let's via into our file vi to 3 let's see where the issue is so if x1 is less than s2 return x1 minus s2 if s2 is less than okay okay so here x1 minus x2 because red yeah x1 minus x2 so we're not swapping the numbers so let's check and see and let's um, compile our code and um, yep so that is correct now so minus 15 15 and 0 is correct let's see how we can write our next code what's our question question number four Write a function that reverses the content of an array of integers, where n is the number of elements of the array. Write a function that reverses the content of an array of integers. So let's see how we can do that. So we did something like this in our previous stacks. That's the uh, 0x05 pointers, arrays, and strings, where we reverse um, um, content of a file. We are going to use the same logic we're going to use the same logic to do this where we will first of all um, know the length of the string then divide it by two and once we divide it by two 
we will then pick each string and swap the first string with the last string swap the second string with second to the last string all the way till we get to the middle string that is constant and then once that is done you've been able to swap the strings so let's see how we can write this first let's write the file name the file name um, is um, rev underscore array dot c okay so let me copy the the function and let's document betty together so the function name is reverse array so function function name and um, parameter one parameter two is going to return void but let me just give it a return statement so return void or zero okay so let's rush through this and see how we can write this so write a function that reverses the length of a string of an array so let's declare a variable to loop and also let's declare a, a variable to hold one half of our array while we reverse like i said we're going to divide it by two using the same um the same logic we use in our last in our previous um task where we reverse a string is the same thing no difference so let's start writing our code um i'll be a bit fast now and i is less than n divided by two okay so what do we do now here we are going to see j equals to a of i please pay good attention because you will need um, some of these logics you will need them so please just try to pay attention okay so here a equal to a minus one minus i minus one and minus i so what's the next thing we do the next thing we will do is is to check for the half length which is a of the full string minus 
1 and minus i is equals to the other half which is held down by j okay and i think that is all we are asked to do and um, we will just return void okay i hope um this works so it's the same logic with what we did the last time so that's why i'm not really explaining this all right um so let's go ahead and check betty so betty for okay y spaces um 17 and 20 okay let's fix that um uh, what did betty complain about okay And that is okay and 20 y space where is the y space here yeah. okay let's see again betty great betty is good so let's copy the compilation line All right, so let's go ahead and compile our code and see. Um, return with a value in function. Oh, okay. So because it's returning void, this guy is saying um, no need of adding the return value here. So it's already void is zero. We know it's zero. So we could just leave it like that and it should work just fine. So let's see. Yep. So let's go ahead and um, and check our code. So you don't need to return zero again. It's already returning zero. So you can see that our code works properly. So it reverses from zero this disease to this disease just by using that same concept you used in our last stack. So for ref dot c. So just see it reverses the distance. So first you need to know the length of your array once you know the length of your array the next thing you need to do is to divide your array by two such that one half will be held down by something so we now use we declare j to use j to hold down one half of our array and then we run through our array all right and then we say n minus one so each time each time it runs it's going to minus one character from n so it minus one character from the other half all right and then minus i so it minus one character from i and minus one character from the other end so it's picking from so if it picks the first line it picks i it picks one here and then picks one here drop it here at the middle and swap it basically that is what this string does just to reverse the string all right so that's for question four this video is already too long i am going to end this video here god willing i should be able to continue this video it's quite lengthy but like i said before we begin the everything about this tax is already in a google form which i'm going to share with us all you need to do is just go look at the files and um, the code try to understand them with all the concept we've done before anything you don't understand check the manual check the man of um, that string function you should be able to understand them because all these strings you are seeing um scru sruc cpy they have their specific uses in strings and array so read about them the function the concept you don't understand and then you can just look at the answers already provided and complete attacks thank you for joining and uh, leave a thumbs up 
like I always say, I do this because I don't want to edit videos, right? I do this so that you see that you need to you need to debug, all right? Understand when you need to debug. Nobody should make you feel any less, all right? We all make those little little mistakes in coding. But the good thing is that you're able to look at your code and debug your code and you walk through your code, all right? So thank you guys for joining and see you again in our next video. Bye for now.